These are rats. I like rats. I think they're cool. All rodents are adorable to me. I've had at least like six or seven hamsters during the first 10 years of my life. The reason why I mention this is because I recently read an article about the unethical treatment of lab rats. The article attributed this partly to the human abhorrence towards rats. And then that got me thinking, why do we hate rats so much? I guess we've got the obvious reasons to hate rats. They spread disease, they cause like 19 billion dollars in damage. So yes, it is reasonable to hate rats. And I feel like society encourages us to hate rats more than to love them. But why is that? Why do we hate? Why do we feel disgusted? And how are we even capable of feeling these emotions? Time for some light brain facts. There is this part in our brain called the limbic system and the limbic system has multiple regions. Every single part of the limbic system is trying to influence the hypothalamus. So each region will both influence the hypothalamus and also inhibit other regions. The hypothalamus does a lot of work. It's involved in a lot of neuroendocrine stuff, releasing various hormones, it controls your metabolisms, regulates your circadian rhythms, etc. So if you can control the hypothalamus, you get to control the whole body. The limbic regions are all interconnected in a lot of very complicated pathways, which allows us not only to be cognitively aware of the emotion, but also experience the bodily sensations. Now, psychology has multiple theories on emotion. The James Lang theory of motion was created by a guy named William James and Carl Lang. And basically they said that your bodily state affects your brain. So essentially when your brain receives a stimulus, your body responds to that stimulus before your brain is even aware that your body is responding to that stimulus. And then when your brain recognizes like, oh, my body is responding in a certain way, that's when you attribute that behavior, that bodily sensation to a certain emotion. And that's how you're cognitively aware of that emotion. Then came along Cannon and Bard's theory which basically says that the bodily change and the cognitive awareness is simultaneous. And then Schachter came along with his two-factor theory saying that the bodily arousal and the cognitive awareness from a stimulus is what leads to the emotion. Now, there's this famous book called Descartes' Error written by neuroscientist Antonio Damasio. In that book, Damasio proposes the somatic marker hypothesis, which basically states that emotion guides and influences rational thought. In essence, what he proves is that emotion cannot be separated from rationality because emotions drive rationality. Now, speaking of a scientist whose name starts with D, do you guys remember Darwin? Everybody knows him for natural selection, which is cool, but he was also a pioneer for the scientific study of human behavior. In 1872, he wrote a book called The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Animals. But it's been a while since 1872, and we actually know a lot more about the brain and how it relates to emotion. There's a small region in the cerebral cortex of our brain known as the insula, and it mediates our responses to discomfort disgusting things. The insula triggers responses like gagging at the smell of rotten food and what that's supposed to do is keep us safe from things like, I don't know, eating poisonous stuff. But what's cool about the insula in humans is that it also reacts to morally disgusting things. Paul Rosen from the University of Pennsylvania did a really interesting study on children and what they find disgusting. In his study, Rosen found that adults believe in contamination. Basically that when something disgusting touches something clean, that clean thing will be contaminated by the filth of the disgusting thing. But children were different. While they were reluctant in drinking a beverage with a dead cockroach floating in it, they were more than willing to drink a beverage that had the cockroach taken out. This tells us two very interesting things. Number one is contamination. As David Pizarro from Cornell University says in his TED talk, contamination makes it very easy for us to believe that either an object, a person, or even a group of people should be avoided because they are disgusting. Number two, social pressures and learning. Basically what we view as disgusting is influenced by what society says is disgusting. Now, when we apply the concept of feeling and emotions into humans and social interactions, it actually gets kind of complicated. We naturally tend to divide the world into two. 
we divide it into us so everything that is yourself and everything that you identify yourself with and then them so anything that isn't you anything that you don't identify with Children as young as five show preference for the us group. Neuroendocrinologist Robert Sapolsky says that if you show somebody a face that is of a different race than that person, their amygdala will light up. The amygdala is a part of the limbic system that is associated with fear and aggression. This us versus them theory is so deeply rooted in our evolutionary history and it's partly the reason why when we feel like we hate somebody that's a them, we can't exactly pinpoint why. Most of the time when people provide explanations for their moral judgments, those are all post hoc realizations and aren't actually the basis of their judgments. So yeah, this is why we hate, this is why we hate rats and why we associate them with things like dirt and poverty. But in some ways, this is also why things like racism exists, why people refuse to help the most vulnerable of their society when they could do so much more by just giving them a helping hand. There's no way to get rid of us versus them. We have no way of getting rid of our emotions. We have no way of getting rid of our disgust or our hate. Those are all so deeply ingrained into our evolutionary history that we just can't get rid of them. In some sense, that's asking ourselves to get rid of the very things that make us human. And we can't because those things are just who we are. But what's different about humans and humanity, other than maybe hating rats, is that we have the power to transcend above those theories of hate. We have the power to be more than just an us versus them theory. As rooted as we are in it, humanity is not defined by evolutionary history. We can rise above that. We can be better. It's not going to be easy. It's not meant to be. But we can always try. And I think we always should.